Welcome to the 2024 Play for K, benefiting the KYO Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation. You will see pink sprinkled throughout Colonial Life Arena here in Columbia, South Carolina, the number one team in the nation. Back at home, they're undefeated. They have won 39 straight games against SEC opponents, and they'll try to extend that this afternoon. We're excited to be with you, Courtney Lyle, alongside the Hall of Famer National Championship winning head coach, Carolyn Peck. Yeah, this game is important when it comes to wins and losses, but it's more important because we're raising money for cancer research. And we have a lot of a whole slate of great games that you're going to see pink throughout the day and really bringing attention, helping to raise money for the KEL Foundation. Yeah, if you're able, please help us. You can get more information on the KEL Foundation. Well, we're looking at the number one team in the nation. It's incredible what Dawn Staley has done. She has reset the standard and taken South Carolina in 16 seasons to new heights that this program had never been at before. And not only has she built a winning program, she's been able to sustain it. When you look at the, her ability to get to Final Fours, to win NCC championships, she's got two national championships, and a lot of that has to do, it's not just the starters are bringing in five talented players, the bench that she supports her team with, and that enables the success to continue. Yeah, South Carolina now has 13 seasons with 20 or more wins. It's impressive. They'll be facing a scrappy Ole Miss team, and you got to watch out for Marquisha Davis, or should we say, Airquisha. Airquisha. Airquisha is what Coach Yo is calling Marquisha Davis now. She has been on a tear as of late. Right now, she's averaging over the last three games almost 24 points per game and scoring at 58%. Marquisha Davis is quick off the bounce. She's got a terrific mid range, and you will watch her fly in transition. Towels are up, Sandstorm is on. The third sellout of the season here in Columbia, the fans, as they call them, continue to turn out. South Carolina has led the nation in attendance the last nine seasons. And they will control the opening tip. The fans have really gotten behind this South Carolina team really for quite a while now. It used to be just the, you know, games that were against ranked opponents. Now it's anybody South Carolina plays. Raven Johnson looking nine seconds on the shot clock. Ole Miss prides themselves on their defense. And Ashlyn Watkins up and in for the first points for the Gamecocks. Starting five for the Ole Miss Rebels. This is the 10th different starting lineup they have used this season. Tyus Singleton getting the nod. Rita Igbakwe is going to come off the bench for Coach Yo. Well, and defensively, it could be the advantage of Ole Miss because they can get out. You've got to defend South Carolina. They are much improved from the three-point line. And don't forget paint points, too. I mean, you've got to defend South Carolina all the way around. All over the place. But when you've got a player like this one right here, Camilla Cardoso, 6'7 inside. And I asked Coach Joe last night, I said, are you going to bring a double team? She said, no, we're just going to go one-on-one. -on -one. Madison Scott up over Cardoso and one coming. That'll be the first on Cardoso. Coach Joe wants her team to push in transition. If you can get down the floor and score against South Carolina before they get their defense set, look, that's to your advantage. Madison Scott trying for the three-point play. She is naturally playing the four position, but has played some point guard this season due to injuries, and she'll drop that one in, Ole Miss in the lead. Here's South Carolina's starting five. You'll notice Ashlyn Watkins back in the starting lineup for the second straight game. Chloe Kitts was dealing with an illness, didn't practice on Friday. She is available today, but Don Staley keeping Ashlyn Watkins in that lineup. Kennedy Dot Todd Williams has made her presence felt. She picked up full court, then got the block on the other end. Now, Ole Miss in transition. Uh-oh. Cardoso with the swat and a little stare down. Uh, she said a little no-no. Uh-uh. Camila Cardoso, sixth in Division I in blocks per game. She's actually tied with Ashlyn Watkins for that category. 
We've seen Camila Cardoso become more dominant. She has become more confident on the floor since moving into the starting lineup this season. Offensively and defensively? Both sides. I think she is paint dominant. Tahina Pow Pow, a little bit short. Ashlyn Watkins goes back up to help her out and got herself to the free throw line. Against South Carolina, you cannot allow those second chance opportunities. On the first shot, when it goes up, all five players have got to check their person and box out. First fast foul whistled against Madison Scott. Watkins misses the first. Dawn Staley has won 86% of her games at home. That is first in South Carolina history. She's got a team that's balanced on offense and defense, both in the tops in those categories in Division One. We talked about perimeter paint points, but also in transition. Yeah, non-negotiable for Don Staley is you got to defend, you got to rebound, and now to add the shooters on the perimeter to go along with that inside presence makes them a team that definitely could contend for a national championship. And Tyus Singleton traveled. Well, Yolette McPhee McEwen, Coach Yo, as they call her, in her sixth season. Got this team to the Sweet 16 last year. Projected to be a number seven seed in the tournament this year by Charlie Cream. You remember what Ole Miss did last season during the regular season against South Carolina. I mean, that came down, went to overtime even. It was in Oxford, Mississippi, and we asked Coach Yo, how did you kind of pull that? She said it was an element of surprise because they came out, Ole Miss came out in the zone, and that was something South Carolina struggled with. It was not a surprise when they tried it in their SEC tournament meeting, and South Carolina took over. Yeah, the cat was out of the bag once they got to Greenville, South Carolina. That's the first foul whistled against Kennedy, Todd Williams. Look at the full court pressure Ole Miss is bringing. You'll see it all over their program. Last night we met with Coach Yo. She had a shirt that said, we defend. That is the DNA of their program. The very heart of it is their defense. At the end of shoot around, a most shoot around, she wears defense across her chest. And as the clock is running down for practice to end, she picks one player to go one on one. And she says she's undefeated. Nobody has scored on Coach Yo. Snitta Collins whistled for her first. Coach Yo will play every possession of this game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, most definitely. And her husband, Kelly, is here, too. And he stands the whole game. He said he only sits down when she sits down. And the only time she sits down is in a timeout. Snow Collins is going to come up with it for the Rebels. Marquisha Davis over to Singleton. Second foul whistled against Camila Cardoso. That could be big. Yeah, a big advantage for Ole Miss as Cardoso will take a seat. Chloe Kitts will check in. We welcome you into Columbia, South Carolina. Those of you just watch, joining us, watching Virginia Tech take down North Carolina. Courtney Lyle, the Hall of Famer, Carolyn Peck with you. And Ole Miss up right now, five to three early on in this ball game on the number one team in the nation. And Camila Cardoso just picked up her second foul. She is on the South Carolina bench now. So the interior for South Carolina, it's two sophomores that are gonna have to handle things on the inside. There's Raven Johnson getting a screen from Chloe Kitts, who is back available after dealing with an illness this week. Like South Carolina players and Ole Miss players. Look, that's, that's great sportsmanship right there. Yeah, little traffic underneath. Everybody trying to help Marquisha Davis. Ooh, 
Dunst. I think it was like, what are y'all doing? Then she figured it out. Oh, Camilla Cardoso, we mentioned, she is on the bench with two fouls. This is a player that's in the running for the National Player of the Year candidate. She has improved so much in her time coming from South, uh, South Carolina. Remember, she started at Syracuse. She's got 10 double-doubles this season. Last five games, she's averaged 15 points a game, shooting 59%. And Don told us that she is really taking the game seriously. She's comprehending what's going on. You can see her processing when she is coached in how to improve her game. She's really processing what the coaches are giving her. And we asked Don specifically about Camila Cardoso in that LSU game because she struggled in the first half. And Don said, remember, She's still got to get used to those big moments and being the go-to player inside. Until she brought that up because with the way that she's played this season, you just assume that she got a lot of experience in that position last year. But she was playing behind Aaliyah Boston. So now coming in, now she's the go-to. She's the starter. She's the anchor of this South Carolina team. So here come the Ole Miss Rebels. They pride themselves on their defense. They call it dictate and disrupt. It's the offensive end that's been a little shaky. They're 11th in the SEC in points per game. They do not shoot the three very much. Well, they got to play point guard by committee. Because yeah, KK Deans went down with an injury. Up at the top of the key, right as I say that, Carissa Richardson says, hey, watch me hit this. Hey, watch out for Carissa Richardson, number 22 in blue for Ole Miss because she hit her first few shots against Tennessee, got heated up, put 21 up against the Lady Vols. Only missed one shot in that game. Tahina Pow Pow almost threw it away, but Ashlyn Watkins, who is back in the starting lineup today, on cleanup duty, up and in. Had her first career start in their last game against Auburn. Ashlyn Watkins looks very comfortable in her starting role, knowing her job. It is important you protect the paint, you get the loose, and create those second chance opportunities. Ashlyn Watkins started against Auburn because Chloe Kitts was under the weather. She's been starting in that four position. The whole telling factor was the chemistry. Who had better chemistry with Camilla Cardoso? And Don Staley told us that. Both players were right up there, but hits just a little bit ahead. My laser for Wiley, the highlight reel up to Chloe Kitts, and she traveled. And for Wiley lost a shoe on the pass. <laughs> Blew a tire. But looking to push, run in transition. She, it did not, she never, Full Wiley never broke a stride when her shoe came off. She just kept going. Marquisha Davis just came out of the locker room, back on the bench. She's all good to go for Ole Miss when they need her. Kids with the takeaway. She's got Full Wiley. Kids will kick it out to Bree Hall. Too much on the three. Ole Miss defense. You look at the players that are on the floor, they're all the same size. So ball screen actions, they're going to switch all of those. It's going to be tough for South Carolina to get open looks in the half court from three. Pow Pow sees she does not have numbers, so she pulls this back up. They'll set up the offense. Tahina Pow Pow, the transfer from Oregon. See that switch? Snutta Collins got help. Rotate back. And a little miscommunication. Tahina Pow Pow and Bree Hall going for the basketball. And it's a one point Ole Miss lead here early on in the first quarter. What was important to Coach K was empowering women. And the K Y'all Fund is about helping those next to you and continuing to empower women when they are going through one of the toughest times in their life. Tasha Butts was one of the lives that was lost to cancer this year. The former Lady Vol on to be a coach. 
And you hear about what the KL Cancer Fund has done. You heard Tasha's words about it. Since its inception in 2007, the KL Cancer Fund has awarded $8.28 million to support scientific research and programs that provide access to quality cancer health care for under-resourced women. And, you know, in this game, you talked about it, Carolyn. It's hard to find someone who doesn't know somebody who's been affected by cancer. Dawn Staley, one of those, her sister Tracy, battled cancer. Yeah, Tracy Underwood battled leukemia but Tracy is here today she's sitting courtside but we also lost a dear friend and coach in Nikki McCray also that had a battle with cancer that was an assistant coach for Don Staley so every donation every penny that you can give to donate to the KL fund to go toward that research is greatly appreciated yeah, you can support the KL Cancer Fund in partnership with the WBCA and the V Foundation for Cancer Research. If you can help us, please donate at KL.com. Courtney Lyle and Carolyn Peck with you from Columbia. Watching South Carolina, the number one team in the nation, who is second in the nation in field goal percentage, struggle. They're shooting 22% from the field to start this game. And Dunn Staley has already gone to her bench. Only two starters on the floor right now. Really just one, Raven Johnson. Yeah, Chloe Kitts coming off the bench today. She did not practice on Friday, but is back from that illness. And my laser full Wiley driving in. There's gonna be a foul on Madison Scott, and that is her second. So Madison Scott and Tyus Singleton, both with two fouls for Ole Miss. Camila Cardoso not on the floor for South Carolina because she has already picked up two fouls. It looks like Coach Yo is going to leave Madison Scott in the game. No, nope, she recognized it. Here comes Snedda Collins. Now Collins will replace Scott. Marquisha Davis back in. Rita Igbakwe playing inside number 32 in Navy for Ole Miss. For Wiley drops in the second. She's gotten more and more in playing time as the season has gone on, coming off 15 points against Auburn. And it's because of her defense. And Don told us, yeah, she's a highlight waiting to happen on the offensive end, but she also has committed defensively. That was a terrific pickup of Kennedy Todd Williams as she came down the court. You do not have a choice to play for either one of these teams. You have got to play defense That's and be real committed talk. to it. Absolutely. Jump ball. I think possession will stay with Ole Miss. If Ole Miss can take care of the basketball and rebound with South Carolina, they give themselves a chance on the road here in Columbia. Carissa Richardson working on Kitts. That was a big time box out by Saniya Fagan. Raven Johnson pushing pace. They'll skip it over to the other side to Full Wiley. Up and in by Laser Full Wiley. You're going to hear it often. When Full Wiley goes to the basket, somebody in the crowd is going to go, oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Started out a little bit slow in their last game. But she said, you know, I missed a couple of easy ones, and that just motivated me. I had, knew I had to get back in there and hit them. Up. And she, hit him. She's so smooth. Attack, and she looked off like she was going to pass it and kept it for herself. Look, the look away. Oh, don't look at the eyes. It'll trick you every time. Full Wiley was a McDonald's All-American, number 13 overall in her class. She's a native of Columbia, South Carolina. She just got a block on Kennedy Todd Williams, too. Took a piece of it on Todd Williams' first shot. So they call the foul on Saniya Fagan. It'll put Kennedy Todd Williams at the free throw line. We mentioned that Ole Miss has been playing point guard by committee. And recently over the last several games, Kennedy Todd Williams has had the ball more to initiate the offense. Coach Yo won't say that she's actually playing the point. 
But what I like about what Coach O has done by putting the ball in the hands of Kennedy Todd Williams and also Madison Scott, when you're playing off the ball, you don't realize how hard a job it is for the point guard. But now that they get to experience that, they have an appreciation how hard you've got to cut to get open, how important it is when a pass comes to you, you've got to go catch it. Sonia Fagan in trouble, kicks it out to Watkins. And that's the first on Rita Ibakwe. So Ashlyn Watkins back to the free throw line for the second time today. It's the first. Don't forget our triple header continues after this game, capping it off. UCLA and Stanford. That's coming up next here on ESPN2. Really interesting, Stanford dropping a game to USC at home where I don't know if you've heard, but Juju Watkins is pretty good. She had a 50 piece on the road. And she, it wasn't just easy, easy bucket. She did it getting downhill, attacking the basket knocking down the free throws when she got there. She just had a total complete game. Watkins with the swat on the opposite end. And Fagan is fouled by Ibakwe, her second. Yeah, Juju Watkins broke the school record in scoring on Friday at Stanford. Most points in Division I by a freshman since 2010. The most points all time in a Pac-12 game. Second most, Kelsey Plum had 57. The future is bright for college women's basketball. When you look at what Juju Watkins has done, Hannah Hidalgo at Notre Dame, she's been putting on a show. Madison Booker at Texas. Michaela Williams at LSU, and then we got Malaysia Fulwali right here. Ole Miss has missed its last six shots. Both teams not shooting the ball well in the 20 percentile. Carissa Richardson, that was a much needed bucket. And understand, Carissa Richardson is a sophomore. That's what Coach Yo keeps talking about is how good she is and she's so young. It's been her first season at Auburn before transferring to Ole Miss. Fagan back up top to Raven Johnson. Inside in the lane for Raven. Well, Raven Johnson now going to turn up the heat. Need to pay it back. South Carolina picking up in full court. Under a minute to go here in the first quarter. Both teams struggling offensively. Old Miss, one of their last seven. Todd Williams trying to get past Full Wiley, but runs into Sanaya Fagan, and she's fouled. And that's the second on Fagan. What did Coach O tell us yesterday? And Coach O let us sit in a little film session with her and her team yesterday, but she talked about you've got to be aggressive. You've got to at least probe in to see if you can get to the rim. If not, then she's got some secondary offenses that she'll run. Well, they were looking at film at other opponents playing South Carolina and pointed out when they did not take advantage of open lanes to the basket. Maybe they were timid, maybe they were afraid, and she preached, do not be afraid. You've got to get in there and try it. If you see an open lane against this team, you've got to take it. There's one thing that Coach O is not, and afraid. that's afraid yeah. of anything. <laughs> Both good for Kennedy Todd Williams. Shot clock still on as this first quarter winds down. Well, South Carolina could go two for, could have gone two for one with the pressure from Ole Miss not allowing that to happen. Tessa Johnson over to Watkins. For Wiley, one hand. Five points now for Malaysia. Look how hard now, getting right back in a defensive stance, the pressure on the ball. And Don yelling, don't foul, do not foul her. Ooh. 
Oh! And they say Ashlyn Watkins came over and into Kennedy Todd Williams. So I want to see the first. I want to see that again. Yep. The, well, the thing is, is that the officials are going to call a foul every time you swat down. If Watkins had just stayed vertical, she would have still got the block. She didn't have to collapse her hand down. It's the first foul on Ashlyn Watkins. Todd Williams back at the free throw line. Wiley did not get it off in time, but South Carolina after 10 minutes, up by two points. And Malaysia Full Wiley, she's here. Oh, Full Wiley has been a bright spot for the Gamecocks. Big plays, big moments. Number 12 in white. Full Wiley is full of showtime. She's giving it for the Gamecocks. Welcome back to the SEC on ESPN. First quarter in the book, South Carolina up by two. We've seen a flash of Malaysia full Wiley. Look, this started when she was real young in the driveway, working on the big moments with one of her siblings counting her down. It's pretty cool to see. That's where the highlight reel began. Did you see the spin, the 360 yeah. spin before the shot? Her little sister Jada, after school, they would practice that moments countdown because she was preparing for this moment. All right, looking at freshmen across the nation, you think Malaysia Fulwiley is one of the best freshmen that we've seen this year? I think that she is. Now, the reason being that I've got her, she's at the bottom, one on the bottom of my list, but because she doesn't get as much, many minutes. This team doesn't depend on her as much as the others. You look at what Juju Watkins has to do for USC. Hannah Hidalgo starting for Notre Dame. Madison Booker at Texas. But I think that Full Wiley is going to be a star in college basketball. I think that was clear from the first time we saw her, which was South Carolina's game in Paris against Notre Dame when she had the play that was all over Sports Center. See how Ole Miss can switch. Really making it difficult for South Carolina to get open looks. A kick back out to Bree Hall for the two. How big has Bree Hall been down the stretch? Those two buckets she hit in that LSU nail biter were crucial in the fourth quarter. I want to go back to your freshmen. You were mentioning some names. These are the ones you see kind of at the top of the pack when it comes to national freshmen. Yeah, the top four, they're starters on their respective teams. Full Wiley is that spark on the bench. Not that coming off the bench isn't valuable because she definitely does that for South Carolina. But that gives me a lot of confidence that we are going to continue to be entertained in women's basketball with the talent that has come in so young this season. I'm here for it. Wait for March. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> It'll be here before we know it. Marquisha Davis is at the free throw line. Ashlyn Watkins just picked up her second foul. So South Carolina's post in some foul trouble with Watkins, Cardoso, and Sanaya Fagan all with two fouls. Cardoso at the table waiting to check in as Tahina Pow Pow drives. You know, Tahina Pow Pow, known as a three point shooter, but she's got terrific handles. And I know that Ole Miss wanted to challenge her pressure on the point guard, but she is finding seams, finding a way to get to the rim. Foul was on Rima Collins of Ole Miss. Pow Pow at the free throw line. You mentioned it, first in the nation in three point percentage, although over her last two games, she's shooting 18% from three. She's not getting easy looks, that's for sure, because she's at the top of everybody's scouting report. But most shooters, or some shooters will, if my shot's not falling, what else can you find to do? And Pow Pow has made her impact on this team. Cardoso is back in the game for South Carolina as Kennedy Todd Williams goes high up off the window. She's got seven. 
little bit of a risk for Don Staley. Her team has the lead and finding the need to put Cardoso back on the floor. Well, other two main post players in Sonia Fagan and Ashton Watkins have two fouls as well. There's the chemistry we've seen Chloe Kitts and Camila Cardoso. Like Kitts, old school shot fake. Marquisha Davis misses, gets her own rebound. Look at the post sharing the sugar. Uh, this connection, like you said, from Cardoso to Chloe Kitts, and then the shot fake. Oh, the patience. That's what you call post patience. When you have that kind of composure in this young, in so young in Kitts' career, her game's just going to continue to evolve. Now, just a sophomore came mid-year last year and used a year of eligibility to enroll early and play for South Carolina. Five seconds now for Ole Miss. Snow to Collins going up, and she knows that Cardoso has to be careful but can't get the shot. And Cardoso showed great discipline there, knowing she couldn't foul. Tessa Johnson, Carolina's still looking for its first three-pointer today. They average seven a game. Richardson going by Cardoso. Singleton can't get the put back to go. Supporting her teammate there on the opposite side, put back and one coming. And that's the third on Singleton. Pow Pow finds Chloe Kitts down the floor, and Bree Hall doesn't take for granted that shot's going in, follows up and gets the offensive rebound and the put back. Opportunity to go to the free throw line. Ole Miss calls time out as South Carolina up by seven, Bree Hall going to the free throw line when we come back to Columbia. Kelsey, thank you. Yeah, Dre had mentioned it. Madison Scott's got two fouls. Tyus Singleton has three for Ole Miss. Rita Bakway with two. Meanwhile, you, you heard him say, I mean, South Carolina's got Camila Cardoso out there with two fouls on the floor. But, and I think this is good experience for Cardoso because this could be a situation that they're put in in the tournament. And so Dawn is finding out, can she trust Cardoso to play with two fouls? Ole Miss offensively, they're 0 for their last five. Snow Collins. The turnaround on Pow Pow, and it's rebounded by Tahina Pow Pow. You see immediately who Chloe Kitts looks for. Cardoso down low, but she's not able to finish. Igbakwe takes it away. And Todd Williams trying to go pick and roll with Igbakwe, but it goes out of bounds off of her. And watching Camilla Cardoso on offense, she doesn't always take advantage of her footwork, her her posting before the ball comes to her. If she will gain the advantage, really use a drop step, foot, hook action, she can just catch and go. Little runner in the lane from Dahina Pow Pow. A 7-0 run for the Gamecocks. There's Madison Scott back in the game. She's playing with two fouls, but one of the top players for Ole Miss. We mentioned she's a four, but has been playing at the point guard position some too. When the ball comes high to Cardoso, Kitts has got to get low on the block. Well, Wiley with the spin, no. Now the reason Ole Miss has not been able to run Fulwali is picking up the ball as soon as the Rebels have the ball. Marquisha Davis gets the bounce in. Remember, her last three games, she's averaging 24 points per game. Fulwali a bit short. Madison Scott going one-on-one -on -one with Kitts, and she wins the battle. That's what Coach O told us that she wanted from her team. 
Just check and see. Check the, check the water. See if you can score before South Carolina can get back. Just like that, a 6-0 run for Ole Miss. And Cardoso is fouled by Ibakwe. Ole Miss looking for opportunities either off a ball screen or running in transition. Madison Scott goes straight at Chloe Kitts and gets the finish. So Jador Young checks in for Ole Miss. Well, here's our ESPN Big Monday doubleheader. We start in the ACC Miami, Virginia, and Charlottesville at 7 Eastern. Then it's round one of the Sunflower Showdown. Hunter Dickinson and number eight Kansas squaring off against Kansas State. Both, both also available on the ESPN app. So Camila Cardoso checks out. The trust factor paid off for Dawn Staley. She did not pick up a third foul. Yep, and, and she played very disciplined. Now this South Carolina lineup, four guards on the perimeter with Chloe Kitts on the floor. Zakaya Stevenson driving in for Ole Miss. Into Marquisha Davis. Elevates, but it bounces out. She has one of the prettiest shots to watch. South Carolina just showing you how many different ways they can play. The big lineup, now this small lineup. Bree All playing the four. You can switch all the screens defensively, and then you got different options. Really can play a four out offensively. Pow, pow. Still no threes today for South Carolina. So how offensively can this benefit Ole Miss, but since South Carolina's gone small? Well, that was going to say, you got to go to Jador Young. She's got a size advantage. If she can post up, she find a guard on her. She's got to get to the rim. Gets back to full Wiley. Cardoso is waiting at the table to check in. I think Don Staley's playing with fire. And that's a foul on Tahina Pow Pow. Her first. That looked like to me, Pow Pow straight up, principle of vertical, but it's that left arm. Can't break the plane. She did everything she was supposed to to the very end. So that'll put Zakaya Stevenson, the freshman out of Virginia Beach, Virginia, at the free throw line. 67% free throw shooter. Two-point game. Jador Young with the block of Camilla Cardoso and the Ole Miss bench was loving it. And I know Car Carmilla has the move with the, with the dribble, but I like a post player. Just drop, step, and go, especially when you're one-on-one. -on -one. Richardson spinning herself to the free throw line. Tessa Johnson called for the foul. Ole Miss going to the free throw line for the 12th time today in this first half. Well, this is an Ole Miss team that 
12th in the nation in free throw attempts per game. They're 18th in the nation when it comes to free throw makes per game. But they only shoot 68% from the charity stripe. Richardson dropping in the first. All kinds of foul trouble on both sides. Cardoso with two, Watkins with two, Sanaya Fagan with two for Carolina. Three post players. A four-year player, Camilla Cardoso. Don Staley is trusting to be on the floor. Look how smart. Bree Hall has to be to be able to be versatile enough to play the three and the four. This is the three-pointer. South Carolina now 0 for 5 from three. Yeah, what Ole Miss could do is put Cardoso in ball screens. She's not going to foul you. She's not going to come out to help. In transition, the best friend roommate connection, Raven Johnson to Camila Cardoso. It's a first field goal in over three minutes for South Carolina. I love how Raven Johnson just throws it up in the air and she knows exactly where Cardoso wants it. Way at the top. Oh yeah, she <laughs> goes and six, gets seven. it. Yeah. And Richardson traveled. Eight turnovers for Ole Miss. Raven Johnson, she is eyeing, looking for Camilla all the way and just lays it, serves it up perfectly to number 10 in white, 6'7", running in transition. So South Carolina is going to call a timeout here. 2.13 until the half and just a three-point game. We step aside for 30 seconds. Check out our women's basketball doubleheader on the SEC Network Thursday night. The Gamecocks hosting Missouri here at Colonial Life Arena. That's at 7. Then Angel Reese, number 9 LSU. They're on the road to take on Vandy. Should be a pretty fun night of hoops. LSU trying to get back on track after dropping a couple of games. And Vanderbilt was so close in their last game against Ole Miss. Just not able to pull it off Ole Miss aggressive and started extending their pressure. You see these two teams we have here at the top of the SEC standings. You want to be one of the top four teams because you get the double bye in the SEC tournament. It's interesting to hear Coach Yo remind her team where they were seated. Number two in the SEC, and, and she told them, we belong. We have worked to be here. And to have her team continue to play with that kind of confidence. I think they should have a whole lot of confidence. You're playing with the number one team in the country, and it's a three-point game. Foul trouble and some tough shooting on both sides have played each of these teams. And Cardoso misses. She's only hit one field goal, one for four from the field, too, in limited minutes. See, there you put Cardoso in ball screens. This will stay with Ole Miss. She's not going to help. So I like, the, I like the call from Yo to put Marquisha Davis at the top. And when Cardoso was in the game, to go to her side off those ball screens. Cardoso subbed out for Kitts. Tessa Johnson corrals it for the Gamecocks. Ninety seconds to go in the half. Been an interesting first half. Close the entire way. Now Tessa Johnson playing a four for South Carolina. Marquisha Davis with the defense and then scooping the rebound. They'll swing it over to Snuda Collins. Collins flying through the lane, but misses. One minute to go. South Carolina just won for its last eight. 
And that's a foul on Pow Pow. Whistled against Snuda Collins, her second. Like that's a big possession for South Carolina. They needed to get something out of that if she hits these free throws because a couple of more possessions for Ole Miss, they could head into the locker room with some momentum. They've had great confidence. They've kept it close in this first half. Well, South Carolina is second in the nation in field goal percentage. They usually shoot 51% from the field, but today just 39%. Yeah, Coach Shell will be able to go in the locker room and go, look, we did what we were supposed to do defensively. Now they've got to find where they can convert on the offensive end. Eight seconds here. Raven the kick out to Tessa Johnson in the corner. The first three of the afternoon for South Carolina. Does that open the floodgates? Shot clock is still on about a three second difference. Now yeah, Ole Miss needs to use all of this not to give South Carolina one more possession. Mariah Noel traveled. Nine turnovers now for Ole Miss. Tessa Johnson parks it in the corner. Raven Johnson finds her. Johnson finds nothing but the bottom of the net. True freshman out of Minnesota. Future is bright for that one. She was one that was in early when we came in to shoot around this morning, getting up those three-point shots. Malaysia Fawiley will initiate the offense here. Five seconds till the end of the half. Bouncing around and in. For Wiley's got seven. And South Carolina ends the half on an 8-0 run. It started in the driveway, not too far from Colonial Life. Malaysia full Wiley. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. It's halftime here in Columbia, South Carolina. The Gamecocks, the number one team in the nation, up 40 to 31 on Ole Miss. But it has been a very tight first half here inside CLA. Courtney Lyle and Carolyn Peck with you. And South Carolina, they're known for having a deep bench. They really had to use it because of foul trouble in that first half. Well, we got to count Chloe Kitts coming off the bench when she has started all season. But with her coming off the bench, other players came in. Can I get a peck yeah? Because it was the contribution of the and others. Chloe Pitt, Chloe Kitts flashing down the middle of the lane. Tess Johnson hit the only three for the Gamecocks in that first half. And Mylasia Full Wiley. Yeah, she had three big buckets that helped South Carolina to hold on to their lead in that first half. Look, the bench for South Carolina, that was 45% of the four of 35 percent of the 40 points that they scored now south carolina is fourth in the nation when it comes to bench points per game they ended the half on an 8-0 run they only hit one three-pointer in that game this is the team that leads the nation in three-point percentage what did you like that Ole miss did that gave south carolina problems well, it was the accountability one-on-one -on -one defense and when south carolina with foul trouble cardoso going out really allows, because of the balance height of Ole Miss, they could switch the ball screens. The defense was there. Now, how will they get points on the board? That's the thing they got to do is take care of the ball and get those opportunities going to the rim. Ole Miss dealt with some foul trouble, too, specifically Madison Scott, who just took that shot. She had two fouls. Tyus Singleton has three. Rita Ibakwe has three for Ole Miss. South Carolina has won 39 straight games against SEC opponents, trying to extend that today. Ashlyn Watkins, and that's the first shot that she's missed. She started three for three. Contested twos, that's what Ole Miss wants South Carolina to have to deal with, run them off the three-point line and then contest them off the bounce. Yeah, Coach Yo let us in in their film session last night at the hotel, and she said, we can go two for two with them, 
We cannot give up the threes, and they haven't today. Carissa Richardson to the rack. Richardson is so savvy in finding her opportunities to score. Little shot fake, drive, get past the big and get the finish. We saw what she could do against Tennessee in the win over Tennessee. 21 points, a career high for her. And Raven Johnson is fouled, going up. Richardson on the shot fake gets Patty Cardoso, and then she severs back in front of her on the right side. That allows her to keep the size of Cardoso behind her and give her the open lane to the basket. And Coach Joe is talking about Carissa Richardson and said, look, she's got to be under control to be that offensive threat. And I see, think we're seeing that over her last few games. She has been in control, really mindful of what she wants to do and the scouting report, who she's facing. You see her game mature. You know, when you come in young, sometimes younger players come in and it's like, I've got to go just 100, hour, 100 miles an hour out of control. And like that shot fake with Cardoso, not only does she get by her, but then she dribbles kind of out to the right so that Cardoso can't recover. I mean, that's just smart basketball. Kennedy Todd Williams initiating the offense. Marquisha Davis trying to go over Ashlyn Watkins, and it's rebounded by Cardoso. Tahina Pow Pow, second three of the afternoon for South Carolina. That is the nation's leading three point shooter in Tahina Pow Pow. She came into this game being two for 11 over her last two games from three as the scouting report all over her. And there's some nice transition opportunities for South Carolina. Bree Hall going inside to Cardoso. Ole Miss calling timeout. South Carolina coming out of the locker room with their track shoes on, wanting to get out and running. The push to Pow Pow in the corner of the three, and then the big girl, Camilla Cardoso, gets served up. Finishes with two and the Gamecocks in control. Well, Camilla Cardoso is one of the top draft prospects, and you saw why on that last play. She goes up and down the floor working in transition. Well, and you watch as soon as South Carolina gets possession of the ball, Cardoso is sprinting down the floor and makes herself available in the middle. That's her energy and her ability to get up and down the floor makes me believe that GMs are going to be interested in her should she decide to come out in the WNBA draft. She's got a terrific paint presence both offensively and defensively. She can run the floor and then her ceiling, she hadn't even tapped how good she's going to be in the improvement I've seen for, from her at South Carolina. When she gets to the next level, she's going to be an even greater player. April 15th is the WNBA draft. So many question marks because there's so many names that don't have to come out this year that can return to college and play another season. Yeah, Caitlin Clark could come back. Paige Beckers could come back. Angel Reese could come back. Cameron Brink? Cameron Brink, sure. We'll see her in our next game, UCLA Stanford, to follow this game here on ESPN2. Just look at the activity of Camilla Cardoso. Now, but she's got to not give up her territory. Once she establishes, establishes and carves it out, she's got to keep that space. They call it travel on Bree Hall. First turnover for South Carolina since the first quarter. 6-0 run for the Gamecocks. Ole Miss, meanwhile, in this quarter, one for three. But remember, Cardoso and Watkins are in foul trouble. Go off ball screens and attack the bigs of South Carolina. Instead, it's a turnover, the 12th turnover by Ole Miss, and Cardoso with the finish! Just like we talked about. The gracefulness of Camilla running in transition, that was beautiful. Madison Scott, pretty shot from the free throw line as she elevates. She's got nine. 
Ole Miss has got to get a stop right now. That focus has to be dictate and disrupt. Tahina Pow Pow short on the shot. The check out Camilla Cardoso. I thought Pow Pow might have given it to her in bad position, but Cardoso knew how many steps she had. One, two, right into the layup. That was pretty. Cardoso's got eight. Kennedy, Todd Williams at the elbow. Inside to Cardoso, working on Singleton. Well, the shot fake gets it done. Do you see that baseline foot on the dribble? What do you call it? That's the tricky foot. The tricky foot. Yeah, you gain your advantage, so when you pick up the dribble, you just turn and go. You got a tricky foot? I have two tricky feet. <laughs> Madison Scott on the block this time. As long as Ole Miss is going to guard Camilla Cardoso one-on-one, -on -one, you've got to give her the ball. Too much on the reverse. Ashlyn Watkins, second live for Carolina. Pick and roll. Beautiful. Pow, pow to Cardoso. Yeah, Coach Joe's going to now, now that South Carolina's going to Cardoso, ball screens, you got to trap it. You got to do something different because she's just such a big target. Well, Rita Ibakwe is heading over to check in for Ole Miss. Chloe Kitts, Malaysia Full Wiley back in the game. Cardoso, eight points here in the third quarter. Well, she didn't get to play in the first half she because of foul trouble. Yeah, she only played in nine minutes <laughs> in the first half. Kids got tripped up on the roll. Marquisha Davis off to the races by herself. Did you see the speed? Hit the gas. I mean. So can Raven Johnson. And she knew exactly where her best friend was. It's almost like they got ESP. In. <laughs> <laughs> two. I think we have that too. I think we do too. It was that three hour car ride from Georgia last night. Oh. Man, that's the third foul on Camila Cardoso. Well, she is projected as the number four pick in this year's mock draft. And Camila Cardoso playing like it here in this third quarter. She's got 14 total points. Her stock can rise when she's playing like this, running the floor. Great catches inside. The tricky foot on the baseline. Camila Cardoso can deliver for the South Carolina Gamecocks. We're on watch for history, 65 points away from tying. Caitlin Clark dropped 38 points, 12 assists, six rebounds last night in a game that kept per Carolyn and I up watching. I know, and I needed my beauty sleep, Caitlin, but we had to stay up and watch the magic that she was putting on. You still look great. Thank you. And in front of a sellout crowd, almost 18,000 people at Maryland to watch that game, and it was down to the wire. But Caitlin Clark is one of those players that can come out and enter the WNBA draft. She does not have to. She could go back to Iowa. But obviously, she would go number one if she comes out. I think so. Yeah. I mean, Indiana <laughs> can't pass on a Caitlin Clark if she does come out. And can you imagine? Lynn Dunn could be sitting there just counting the dollars of the tickets that would be sold, the fans that would come out and watch Caitlin Clark play along with Aaliyah Boston. And Boston, a South Carolina great, a national player of the year, a national champion, a WNBA rookie of the year. <laughs> Ole Miss has hit four of its last five shots. Ibakwe with the turnaround, no.
South Carolina led by nine at the half. They've extended that here in the third quarter. A lot of that had to do with Camilla Cardoso and fast break points. The Ole Miss has got to push before South Carolina can get set. Well, don't forget, coming up next after our game here in Columbia, our triple header will be capped off by seventh ranked UCLA, taking on fourth ranked Stanford. I believe UCLA is playing without Lauren Betts. So how will the Bruin deal with the likes of Cameron Brink and Kiki Arifant inside? And there's a foul on Mylesia Full Wiley of South Carolina, her first. Thompson out for Ole Miss and Carissa Richardson back in for the Rebels. South Carolina spent a lot of time defending the underneath out of bounds and running their underneath out of bounds against Ole Miss this morning. Scott throwing it up to Richardson a little too deep. Raven Johnson swipes it. Yeah, that's a kickball. Don Staley said, throw it up. If a post player has their defender on their back, you don't want them to have to bend down to give up the space they've carved out for themselves. Sanaya Fagan. And she stepped out of bounds. Six turnovers now for South Carolina. This experience that South Carolina is getting for, from their bench now could really pay off for them in March. Prepared for foul trouble should their knock on wood an injury. Wiley pushing pace. Oh, you can't give her a wide open lane. Well, you can't watch her eyes. You watch how she looks the defense off, and, and the defense tries to predict, predict what she's going to do. She will fool you every time. Ole Miss calls timeout. Malaysia Full Wiley could drive a truck through the hole that she was given. But you watch as she's coming down. Again, watch the eyes. See, she's looking to the corner. She sold it to Madison Scott. That a left Main Street wide open. You wouldn't think that's a freshman move. Oh, yeah. But she's got it. She just has a savviness for the game. Go back to the driveway. The countdown, her sister counting her down. You Putting up the big shot. And have the creativity that she has. I mean, this young lady averaging almost 12 points a game. She's got nine today. You know, Dawn Stanley told us, I was once her. I was once a gamer, too. She challenged her at the beginning of the year. Got to get better practice habits. She has, and she's turned up her defense. That's why we're seeing her more. Yeah, I think that she and Dawn are going to have a fun time during Full Wiley's career here at South Carolina because I can see a little bit of Dawn Staley in Full Wiley of how she plays, how competitive she is, the creativity with the basketball. There's a foul on the floor away from the basket and that's on Kennedy Todd Williams, her third. I wonder if Dawn has shared their little secret. You know, when Dawn played at Virginia, she used to wear a rubber band on her wrist, and when she had a turnover, she would pop herself. Hmm. I always thought that was pretty interesting. It is a fun little fact. I've got a few of those for you. Cole Wiley with the vision to see Sanaya Fagan down low. 
And South Carolina used to be known as the land of the Giants, getting the post players. Well, these point guards she's got with Raven Johnson, pow, pow. And now this one right here for Wiley with the takeaway. Trying to go behind the back to Watkins, and it got stuck on her hip. She was trying to get on Sports Center. She got the defensive right, the defense right, then head in the other direction. Just couldn't connect. Watkins got to be ready for that. Swiped again, Fagan and Watkins. Two of the bigs bringing the ball down the floor. Fagan shaking the defense, putting it up and in. Largest deficit this season for the Ole Miss Rebels. Fans coming to their feet. The post play has got to appreciate the guard play. Raven Johnson always head to the rim. Find Saniya Fagan inside and the timing just placing it right where her partner needs it in the paint to get the finish. That's a 6-0 South Carolina run, and that's gonna be a foul on Raven Johnson. Ole Miss has four turnovers in the last three minutes and 50 seconds. Just the first on Raven. On the third quarter. That's what Don Staley expects from her team. To come out with a bang. Outscored Ole Miss 20 to 11. Snowda Collins elevating. Singleton with the put back up and in. For Wiley from half court at the buzzer, no, but South Carolina up 60 to 44. When we come back, how Don Staley has transformed the South Carolina program. When Don Staley took over the South Carolina program, she had a big vision in mind. And in 16 seasons, she has taken South Carolina to places it had never gone before. 14 SEC titles since Dawn had arrived. And then the Final Fours, and then the national championships. Not one, but two national championships she's brought to this program. Let's take a look at our Legends of Coaching Spotlight. It's brought to you by Principal. You see her record over the last 10 seasons. She has won 89% of her games, three Final Fours, excuse me, three straight Final Fours, five of the last eight, and a couple of national titles. What have you noticed, too, about the players that she recruits, the talent that she gets and keeps in Columbia? Not only are they talented, but they have a team first mentality. And they, like you have players like Bree Hall had to wait her time for two seasons before she's getting the opportunity, but prepared when she got here. And the players, they see that their game is going to grow. And you gotta have a winning mentality. When Dawn first came here, she told me she knows what success looks like, sounds like, and feels like. And that's what she has created here at South Carolina. And it's been able to be maintained. Yeah, the Duke, third foul is whistled against Madison Scott here. She also, not only does she recruit players, recruit parents, and she compliments the parents of these players she has on her team that they believe in the vision that she has for this program and knows that their, their children will grow within this program to help it, them achieve their goals. Don was honest, too. Coming into the, into the season with the class that they lost last year, you didn't really know how things were going to look. We saw that. Neither did the AP voters. Not until after that trip to Paris, and they were like, wait a minute. This team is pretty daggone good. South Carolina has not lost a game. They've beaten five ranked opponents more than any team in the nation. Ashlyn Watkins again inside. She's she, up to double figures with 10. She used the tricky foot. She tricky had foot. that baseline 
gained the advantage as the ball was going in, so she kept the defense on her backside. This is what's going to make Ashlyn Watkins such a good post player. You see that baseline foot? She gained that position. Big step to the rim, gets her shoulders parallel to the backboard. Forget about it. We got to talk to Ashlyn Watkins today. She told us, we asked her, what's the biggest difference from your first year to second year? She said, confidence in all aspects of my game. Madison Scott's going to the free throw line. Well, and she said she's found her superpower on the offensive side. This year, different from last year, she was mainly, last year, rebounding, blocking shots, worried about her defense. This year, she's hunting for her scoring opportunities. The second straight game that Ashlyn Watkins has started the first two starts of her career. Well, pickleball is back on ESPN in a big way tonight. Three doubles matches capped off by Andre Agassi and his wife Steffi Graf taking on John McEnroe and Maria Sharapova. James Blake, Jack Sock will be a part of the first two matches with Chris Fowler and Andy Roddick on the call. Coverage of the Pickleball Slam 2 begins at 8.30 Eastern. Would you be on my team? Absolutely. But you got to stay out of the kitchen. I know about I know Ooh, me some you pickleball know just lingo. Enough. Yeah. Our director, Brad Wilson, is a pickleball uh, professionado. Oh, yeah. Mean Ooh. drop shot. Full while he's had some moves today, they just all haven't been able to finish the shot. What's the spin? She is so... A lot of people say this a lot, fun to watch, but I mean, she is entertainment at its best. It makes you take a deep breath before she gets it. You're like, Whew, what's going to happen? Holding my breath, holding my breath. See if the highlight <laughs> comes. <laughs> what do you think about her game? Is it too much at times? Is she trying to do too much? Oh, you can't ever give me too much. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> because, and it's not... She's not doing it for flash. Like yeah. that first behind the back we saw in Paris, it was to avoid yes. the defender. So she's not just doing it to, you know, put on a show. It's effective. Todd Williams driving. Third rebound for Cardoso. the other way. Madison Scott elevates. Mm. Watkins saves it, but back to Ole Miss. Uh-oh. Because if Watkins gets a breakaway, now I'm jealous. You're just jealous because you weren't here in uh, the Kentucky game when Ashlyn Watkins dunked. I was so jealous. Not and only the vice president of the United be, States was here. Yeah, you just had the, your whole first half after that. I mean, you were spent. That was yeah. done. That was it. Because Watkins <laughs> had that breakaway dunk. That was her second dunk of her South Carolina career. She had one her freshman year at Clemson. And she's one of nine players to dunk in women's basketball history. She's the only player to dunk in South Carolina women's basketball history. Shot clock did not reset. Pow Pow in the paint. She has 11. Four players for South Carolina in double figures, led by Cardoso with 14. The balance in SEC play for South Carolina. Five players shooting in the last five games, shooting over 50%.
first one in for Bree Hall. I'm sitting here looking at this crowd. I, I started coaching at Tennessee, and it used to be the traveling show. Everybody wanted to see Pat Summit's teams. Now it's spread across the country. The attendance of women's basketball this season, you know, you've got the Caitlin Clark followers and Iowa, LSU, South Carolina, the lines outside. Finally, people realize women's basketball is a sport you want to see. This is awesome. Cardoso is tripped up. And then Old Miss now with a player down as she fell. She was behind Cardoso. That's Shador Young who is down for Ole Miss right now. Got caught up behind Camilla Cardoso when she fell to the floor. So one leg up off the floor. And good to see that she's able to get up. I see Cardoso falls on her. Now, she, J Jador Young's wearing that knee brace. Uh, she had an ACL tear in high school. She was cleared at the end of December for Ole Miss. But it almost looked like Cardoso fell on the other yeah, leg. Yeah, the other one. They both kind of got tangled up. Right. So she's staying on the Ole Miss bench, so that's a good sign. They're not taking her back to the locker room just yet. Well, she's tightening up her shoelaces, so I hope that's a good sign. Good, yeah. Now Young looks to be okay sitting on the bench. See how Cardoso stepped out, hard hedge on the ball screen and recovered back. Her mobility, so impressive. Watkins swatted it away. And, and then, then dove on the floor. Come on, 6'6". Six, 6'7", six. Six, don't six, cheat her. 6'7", my bad. <laughs> she telling us don't clap for that. That extra energy. Look, you don't see too many centers dive on the floor like that. You ever diving on the floor? Woo! No, that was before NIL. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Finding Watkins, and she is fouled by Ayana Thompson. And another thing about Camilla Cardoso's game, we've talked about a rebounding her production in the paint, but she's also averaging two assists a game. Pretty good for a center. Started her career at Syracuse, was the ACC Co-Defensive Player of the Year and the Freshman of the Year. And transferred over to South Carolina where she got to play with Aaliyah Boston. And now she is the main presence inside for South Carolina. Like she used to be the Robin to Leah Boston being the Batman. Now I feel like she's Batman and Chloe Kitts and Ashlyn Watkins. Now they're the Robins. You see her SEC ranks field goal percentage right at the top 60% from the field. And that LSU game in the first half, she just really got sped up, you know, the physicality inside she settled in in the second half but that's something she's got to get used to because it competition just going to continue to get tougher and they're going to try to knock her off her set and she's got to not give up that space there's another assist for cardoso and Bree hall immediately going to the basket not putting the ball on the floor 
Does she have a tricky foot too? She might bust it out. Does she use it for a three-point shot? No, you don't use it up there. Can't expose it to everything. Yeah. <laughs> but Cardoso protecting the basketball and then Bree Hall, the presence of mind, just where to flash across the base. And the advantage Cardoso has at 6'7", she doesn't make herself small by bringing the ball down, but can pass it from that overhead position. Ibakwe misses the first. We heard the crowd cheering. If an opponent misses two free throws in the fourth quarter, they get free Chick-fil-A. Ibakwe shut that down. And it is about snack time. Well, South Carolina has only given up seven points here in the fourth quarter. They are in control, seeking their 40th straight win over an SEC opponent. South Carolina up 73 to 51 on Ole Miss. Courtney Lyle, Carolyn Peck with you under five minutes to go. Camilla Cardoso at the free throw line and she's leading Carolina today 16 points. And that's after playing only nine minutes in the first half due to foul trouble. Well, it just shows how dominant she is out of the locker room in the third quarter. South Carolina was very intentional, and she got involved specifically running the floor in transition that really helped to expand the lead. The South Carolina team projected to be the number one overall seed. The steal by Raven Johnson and a block charge called on the official. <laughs> she ran right in to Michael McConnell. He apologized. Can another official call a foul on one of their own officials? I don't think so. I don't think that if you don't have a team's uniform. I don't think he had legal guarding position. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think you're right there. He did apologize to yeah. Raven once the ball got back into action. Yeah, you understand, because he thought he was going the opposite end towards the other bucket and then the quick change. <laughs> Look, and Raven smiling, hey, part of the game. Move on, next play. Raven Johnson plays with such a joy for the game. You can tell how much she loves to play the energy that she brings. She's called this a revenge season for her. Uh-oh. And they whistle Marquisha Davis for the foul. That's her fourth. Look at that smile. Raven Johnson on a mission this season. You know, her first year she came in very highly recruited, number one point guard in her class, number two overall. And then she tore her ACL against South Dakota on November 12th of that freshman year and had it taken away from her. I told you coming in she was going to be special. We didn't really get to see her. And I believe when she came in in her freshman year, didn't understand college shape. But coming back last season and now this season, she's at another level. And what a luxury, too, to have Raven Johnson, who's all gas, pushing the pace. And then Tahina Pow Pow, when she's running the point, she can slow things down and give South Carolina a different look, get them into their offense a little bit slower. And then you sprinkle in some Malaysia Full Wiley. Explosive. Fireworks. Spicy. Spicy. see her increase in production too across the board look at the assists going up almost two assists per game more than last year and also look at the field goal percentage 
shooting over 51% from the floor this season. Sakima so Walker inside now for South Carolina, number 35 in white. And Jador Young, who is back in the game after taking a hard fall moments ago, is whistled for her third foul. watching Coach Yo, and I can tell, and watching this game, she is soaking it all in and already calculating the, op the opportunity presented itself to play South Carolina again. What would her adjustments be? And I think, I think one would be, like the first half, they were extremely intentional and in picking up the basketball. They were covering in transition. That got away from them a little bit in the second half. And then boxing out. Got to keep South Carolina off the glass. I've been talking to Coach Yo too. She considers Dawn Staley to be a mentor for her. There too, that talk all the time during the season. She said she even texted her that she was joking with Dawn. She's going to throw that zone out there again. <laughs> That's what she did at for South Carolina to overtime last year. And I think that Coach Yo is taking notes of what Dawn did here in South Carolina, and she's trying to build that in Oxford, Mississippi. Yeah, she faced South Carolina and Dawn Staley when she was the head coach at Jacksonville. And here's Ole Miss's resume that they've put together. They're 49 in the net. Three and four against the net top 50. Charlie Cream has projected them to be a seven seed. This is a team that went to the Sweet 16 last year with an upset of Stanford. When it gets to be turn tournament time, Coach Yo and her team go to another level, specifically on the defensive side. So come tournament time, if Ole Miss is in your bracket, you better no thank you yeah you better find the uh the code of how you can hang on to the basketball for wiley she <laughs> just just gonna sit back and watch her because it's like when she leaves the floor she continues to go up and up and decides at the last minute to release Sanaya Jaw. My lays are full, Wiley. Off the bounce, goes right then back to the left and protects the basketball as she slices through the lane. A little snake action between the defenders. Her ability to change directions on a dime make her so hard to stop. 13 points for Mylesia Full Wiley and Sanaya Fagan is at the free throw line. Full Wiley, 5 of 12 from the field. And something that Dawn has talked to us about when it comes to Mylesia is that. She knows what the standard is, and she knows when she doesn't play to that standard. And Coach Staley was so impressed that already as a freshman, early on in her freshman season, she understood that. Sometimes it takes players a little while longer, maybe a season or two, to understand that concept. She wants to be coached, and she understands the expectations from Don Staley and wants to live up to those and live up to the standards she set for herself. Madison Scott's got to put it up, and she does at the buzzer for three. Still South Carolina ball. See, you can't catch her. She is so quick for Wiley. Oh, but Zakaya Stevenson almost picked her pocket. She did. Ah. 
Well, South Carolina has one more ranked opponent on its regular season schedule. That would be UConn. They are set to meet on February 11th, and you'll see two incredible coaches going head-to-head. -head. Gino Oriema, who has the most titles all-time with 11, up against Don Staley and her South Carolina Gamecocks. That game's been sold out for a long time. We have Paige Beckers coming into town. Aaliyah Edwards and Camilla Cardoso. Yes, please. Going head to head. Yes, please. Let's go. Don't forget, coming up too, as soon as we're done here, we'll get you out to UCLA and Stanford. That game's starting on ESPN News. You know, we talked about South Carolina being balanced, being a great defensive and offensive team. Something, too, watching film last night with Ole Miss that the coaches pointed out, they're not going to get rattled. They're always composed. So no matter what's happening, like we saw, it was a really close first half. South Carolina only led by two points after the first quarter, but they never got rattled. And what le leads to composure is how your point guard handles situations, and that starts with Pow Pow. Let's check in with Kelsey in the studio. Kelsey, thank you. The steal, the score, a host of Gamecocks working together. That's just part of the culture of South Carolina, too, the unselfishness, making that extra pass. Sanaya Ja. She's got help if she wants it. Marquisha Davis shut her down, and this will be Ole Miss basketball. That was one Ja probably should have made one more pass. She had full Wiley running the lane. Good things you saw from Ole Miss today, especially early on in this game. Well, the adjustment that Coach O was looking for her team and their transition defense in the first half, it did not last for four quarters, but they started out with it. They battled. But it was just too much, and especially when South Carolina started to go inside trying to defend Camilla Cardoso one-on-one, -on -one, that was just too much. Marissa Richardson with her second, and Sanaya Ja at the free throw line. South Carolina has shot 43 free throws today. Wow. That's one of the things Coach O has got to address is you've got to defend without fouling. And you can't say officiating because the, officiating, the officials are going to call it the way that they do. You have to adjust your game. Every South Carolina that player that has played has scored today. Six of them in double figures, led by Cardoso with 17. This tells you the depth and the amount of talent that is in that is in those white uniforms. straight wins over SEC opponents, 52 straight wins at home. That is domination for South Carolina.